Hello, my name is Ben DeGroat, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make your very own stop-motion Lego animation just like what you're watching now. Okay, <clears throat> so a little bit of background about me. <clears throat> I'm a professional videographer and marketing specialist, and the thing that really kind of got me interested in that field uh, was the Dort College Prairiegrass Film Challenge. Um, and if you live in Sioux Center, you probably are already somewhat familiar with that. Uh, but basically, you get 48 hours to write, shoot, and edit a film and submit it. And in 2009, uh, my brother and I decided to make a stop-motion animated film for that challenge using Legos. And if making a stop-motion film in two days doesn't sound crazy to you now, it soon will. The film we made became very popular among a lot of people we knew. Uh, I didn't really put it on YouTube until a few years later, um, so it didn't really gain much fame beyond like my friend and family circles. Um, but since then I've had a lot of people ask me how I did it, and people, a lot of kids mostly, have been wanting to know how to do it themselves, because it's pretty cool when you can get your toys to move like that. Um, so I thought I'd show you uh, in this little video, since we're all stuck inside anyway. Uh, it'd be a fun little project. So, <clears throat> there are a uh, few things that you'll need to get started. Uh, the first thing is, of course, a camera. Um, and then Legos, obviously. And you're definitely going to need a minifigure, because that's what you want to animate. And then the last thing is my little secret weapon, Sticky Deck. <clears throat> and I'll explain a little bit why you need that later. So, um, let's get into it. Um, the first thing that I like to do is I like to make a little support system for my camera. <clears throat> um, you can get these little tripods that you can put on cameras, but I like this because this is kind of, um, you know, you're using Legos to keep it in place. You can also use your phone. <clears throat> um, that would work just as well. But this is the actually the exact camera that I use to shoot uh, my stop-motion Lego film almost... 10 years ago now, so I thought it'd be fitting to use this. Before you get started, uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure that nothing's going to move, because if anything moves besides the figure that you're trying to move, it's going to be really bad. It's going to mess up your shot, um, and there's no way you can keep everything perfectly in place while you're doing this. Um, so that's where the sticky tag comes in, or at least this is the first instance of it. So what I'll do is just put a little bit of sticky tag on the back of the little board here. Um, and I should say that you actually don't necessarily need one of these. Um, another technique that I like to do is if you want to make the Lego guy walk on the table here, you just stick a little bit of sticky tack on the bottom of his feet and then he'll stand upright no matter what position he's in. Which, uh, yeah, it's pretty slick. But I'm going to use this little board because it actually makes things a little bit easier. So, I'm just going to stick this down here. Stick that down, make sure it's not going to move. And you got to make sure the camera's not going to move either. So, do the same thing for the camera. <clears throat> I suppose this could also work with like uh, double sided tape or something like that, but. Uh, this is the way I did it originally, so this is kind of how I like to do it. And the other thing is this works really well for putting on Lego guys' feet, like I said earlier. All right, so now that I got everything stuck in place, we are ready to animate. <clears throat> so the way this is going to work is I'm going to move this guy a little bit, and I'm going to take a picture, and then I'm going to move him a little bit more, and I'm going to take another picture. Um, you kind of need to plan out how many pictures you're going to take, um, and how many frames per second you're going to have. Uh, standard film uh, tend to have 24 frames per second, and that sounds like a lot uh, because it is. <clears throat> um, and most animators have gotten around this by doing about 12 frames a second. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, with LEGO guys, thankfully, their range of movement is really pretty limited, so it kind of naturally governs itself. Um, but just kind of keep that in mind that you want about 12 frames per second. So I'm going to do something real simple here. I'm just going to have this little guy, this is Fred. Uh, he's going to walk forward. 
he's going to pick up this little shovel and he's going to pick up this spear. <clears throat> he's going to walk towards the camera. <clears throat> um, so the first thing you need to do is set the scene up where you need it to start and take a photo. One thing that you do have to be a little bit careful about um, is you've got to make sure that your camera is focusing on your subject. Uh, a lot of cameras struggle to focus on really small objects like Legos. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, so now that we've got our first picture, <clears throat> we need to get them to start walking forward. So we need to do this in very, very small steps. So he's going to move his leg forward just a little bit like so. And when people walk, they swing their arms and they swing their arms opposite to how the legs are moving. So we'll move his arm forward a little bit there. And then this arm is going to move back a little bit. All right. And then you take your second photo. Now you move him just slightly forward. This is kind of what I like to call the in-between. He's kind of in between the two studs here. He's not really on one or the other. This one's kind of tricky because he's not really tied down by anything. He's kind of just balancing there. So you got to be real careful. <clears throat> so now he's there and now his arms are in full swing. So swing his arms out just a little bit more. <clears throat> and then take another photo. <clears throat> And then you will just kind of move him forward, have that, whoops, <clears throat> have that foot come completely down, get that back foot down a little bit so he's more supported, and then swing his arms in a little bit because now his arms are coming back down towards his side. Take another photo. And then we bring his back leg forward, whoops. <clears throat> and then bring both legs or both arms down at his side like that and take a photo and that is one full step <clears throat> and then when you start the next step make sure it's with the opposite leg so it's going to be this one here and you will do that same process over and over again until he has reached the shovel there all right, so now I'm realizing uh, one mistake I made is I have this little spear in here and it's not really tied down by anything. So every time I hit it, it moves a little bit. So what that means is as you animate it, if you ever hit this, it's going to move. And like during your animation, the spear is just kind of going to move around of its own volition. Uh, so that's, that's not really so good. That's a problem that can be solved with the handy sticky tack once again. So you could just stick a little bit of sticky tack there, stick it down in there. Now it's not going to move. All right. So now my, my Lego guy is Fred is at the shovel here. What we can do now is he's going to lean down and grab that shovel. <clears throat> so same principles. You just, you're doing the same thing. You're just doing it in really small steps. So he's just going to lean down a little bit. Actually, he's going to start with his, uh, his arms at his side here. Take a picture. <clears throat> now he's just going to lean down a little bit and then you swing his arm out just a tad like so. Take a picture, lean down a little bit more, swing his arm out a little bit more. Take another picture, lean down a little bit more, swing his arm out. Take another picture. He's almost there. Now he's got the shovel in his hand. Oh, now this is a little bit tricky. Got to make sure he's got the shovel. Now he's going to start to come back up. kind of very slowly. <laughs> I 
and I've, I've done this enough times that I can just kind of guess um, with some accuracy uh, how far he needs to move in each frame. Um, but if you're having trouble figuring out um, how far he needs to move in each picture, um, maybe just try to do the action yourself and try to time yourself and figure out how long it takes. And then, um, you know, use that sort of rule of thumb of about 12 frames per second. And, uh, and then that will kind of give you an idea of how long an action should take. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really kind of the basics. You know, I can have him walk forward a little bit, um, you know, raise his arm up, grab this. Um, it's, uh, it's all pretty much the same basic principles. So using those kind of, uh, basic ideas, uh, you can animate pretty much anything. Um, and now I'm going to bring it to my computer and I'm going to show you how to make these pictures into a movie. All right, so I'm at my computer now. Um, and I will be using Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a uh, professional editing program, uh, which does cost money. Uh, but this should be possible on any video editor to include iMovie, which is free. Um, it just works a little bit different, and I'll try to explain that. Um, so I've got my project set up here. I've got a timeline and a folder here for my photos. So I'm going to go ahead and import and uh, I already have it set to the folder where I have my photos. So the way this works in Premiere is I will select the first photo and import, make sure this is checked, import as an image sequence, and open. And Premiere just imports it as a video, which is pretty cool, and I can even kind of see it play in here. Um, but I have to make sure that it's at the right frame rate, because Premiere kind of assumes a frame rate for you. So go ahead and right-click and go Modify and then go interpret footage. <clears throat> um, and as you can see, it, it assumed uh, 30 frames per second, which is uh, a standard frame rate for most video, but we animated in 12 frames per second to make it easier on ourselves. So we're gonna hit okay, and now it pretends that it's 12 frames per second. And then we just go ahead and drag, drag it on the timeline. Um, and we hit play, and there it is. Look at that. There's my goofy little animation. Um, <laughs> the way this would work in iMovie is you would actually have to import all of the photos individually, and then you would have to drag them all on the timeline, and then make each photo uh, one frame. Um, what I did when I made my videos in iMovie is I went into the settings, and I changed the default duration of, of each photo to one frame. And then when I dragged them on the timeline, it would just play like a movie. Um, or actually two frames, actually. Because in iMovie, your timeline plays at 24 frames per second. So you'd have to have to make your pictures be two frames long um, in order for it to play at the correct uh, rate of speed. Um, so yeah, that's that. I hope you learned something. And uh, thanks for watching.